Hello folks, Tough Indigo here again with another cast of Forged Alliance Forever 3v3. And what have I got for you today? We have a Neuroxis map that is it's auto-generated, it's never been seen before. And in the northwest corner, we have our top rated player, Jackhammer 2K, who is in the medium blue at the top. Alexander Berlin, who's in the navy blue, and Leader, who's the lowest rated player on this side, and uh, they are in the purple. And we've got two UEFs here and one Cybron, Cybron being Alexander Berlin here. Uh, meanwhile, in the hot colors in the southeast, the bottom right of the map, we have Max Connector, who is in the scarlet, and they are playing Seraphim. We have uh, Inf23 Chico23, who is playing in orange as Cybrans, and then Quiet Storm, who is at the back in the UEF red. And pretty conventional start so far. Uh, every player has gone first land, which is not at all unusual. As you might already have noticed, I've got some new editing tricks up my sleeve today, and I hope you'll enjoy those as we go through today's match. And whether you did or you didn't, please let me know in the comments. I really need to hear your feedback on this to know what I should do differently next time and how I should mix it up. A bit of early scouting coming out here from Alexander Berlin. It's going to take them a long time to get anywhere, though, as the hilly terrain all over this map really gives it quite long rush distances for land units. Uh, you've got to wonder if we're actually going to see uh, dominating the play here. While we have a quiet moment, I'd like to say thank you to Leader, who is known as Kang on the FAF Discord, for posting this replay in the FAF Discord in the Replaced Cast channel. They described it as an absolutely amazing 3v3 game, very emotional, and said they're pretty sure it's the game of the week. So let's see if it lives up to that hype today. And don't forget, if you've played an exciting game recently and you'd love to see it on the channel or, or any of the other casting channels for Forge Alliance, do feel free to come on the Discord and post it in Replays to Cast. First engagement here, and Alexander Berlin takes first blood, catching a scout. However, Max has brought the comm up to the front. Easily dispatches one of Alex's units and seems to be heading towards these three mass points here to take those. However, the comm does look a bit uh, naked there, quite far away from its few remaining units. We've also got a drop on the way out for Max, which is going into this uh, central plateau area. Uh, we've already had units here from the north team. So some land factories going up here and one there. And these have just been giving their order to start their own land factory. And more engineers being dropped in here. Uh, the three mexes on either side, uh, as well as the, the one on either side at the other end of the plateau, do make this very worth fighting over. Um, but then you can say the same thing about this bottom left corner, which has, as well as a formation of three that looks a bit like a start position, it's got another three further out, and that's on each side of the symmetry line. And really, Max is looking very strong here at having uh, got some mexes up right away. And if we look at the economy, Max is... 31, along with Lidra and Alexander Berlin. Uh, the other three players being a little bit behind on getting their mass points up. Uh, but that means that overall, the two teams are fairly even on mass at this stage. Um, if, we, if we look at Reclaim, 
Uh, we see that the South team has been doing a little better so far, but there's, there's really not much in it. Um, while we've been looking at that, there has been some early bomber raiding. Just going for mass extractors and um, so there has been an air factory come out from Max there and an NT is now chasing off this bomber. Quiet Storm has started uh, upgrading their mexes. Uh, though interestingly, they've started with these ones that are further away and the core ones are, well, one of them is being upgraded already. Um, they've also got an air factory up. In fact, all three players on the south side have got their air factory up. And on the north side, we have one in the back slot from Jackhammer, uh, one in the front slot from Leader, and then two down here from Alex. So now that the factories in the middle have all been set up, there's really some fighting going on here over this position. Um, these units are looking a bit overextended from Max, but you've got to appreciate the raiding. Um, very bold scout here from Lida has been hovering around this base, um, but not been troubled by this interceptor and it's now gone off back home. Um, the fighting in this corner has got stronger as well with now two comms on the front line for the South team and Alexander Berlin caught in the middle of an upgrade here, might have to cancel out of it, but it has 30 seconds left. And they've cancelled. They've gone into the yellow. They've had to start running away. However, there's definitely more blue units than red surrounding these comms. And you have to cross your fingers for Max that they do manage to uh, be rescued by the, the reinforcements coming up from the back here. And now the bombers from Alex flying over, dropping their payloads. And uh, Max wisely decides not to press any further than that. Still putting some damage in on these uh, on these factories, but retreating into the arms of the reinforcements there, uh, leaving them to get attacked by this bomber. Um, however, Inti's now coming in to clear the skies. The bomber threat is over for now. Uh, and now it's... Uh, oh yes, it's very much Chico who's looking in trouble here. Um, they've made it away from the units, but they're already well into the yellow. And they will have to go home and rest for a bit and regen some of that HP before they can really start attacking again. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, Alexander Berlin has... Uh, Alright, uh, is uh, making good progress, more than a quarter of the way to the gun upgrade. And there's some uh, there's some T1 point defense here to try and cement this position. Well, there's no static defenses on the south side. Um, and another gun upgrade coming out now for Max. Um, in the center, these plateaus uh, have mainly been divided down the symmetry line now, as the, the red teams, or the red team, have been able to push uh, off this position, leaving a lot of reclaim behind. Let's have a look. That's uh, just over a thousand reclaim. Probably by the time you include all of this, it's more like two thousand. Um, and the engineers coming up to siphon some of that. And there's no indication that they're going to stop their push here. They're taking on these factories. There's not enough down here to stop. And this factory is idle. This would need to be going really full tilt to 
have a hope of producing anything that could stand up to that and uh, even then I think it would need a few more engineers to support it so it's looking like South is going to keep hold of this plateau for now and uh, they should push their mixes up, uh, their um, NGs up and capture these mixes um, as they are currently behind by about 14 mass um yeah. And Quiet Storm has also brought their calm up here. Uh, and as they're on full health, that's uh, it's a lot more. Uh, it brings a lot of ability to attack, which the uh, the other two battle scarred commanders don't really have. Uh, well, we've got two upgrades here from Max and. Uh, Uh, yeah, and Gun going on for Chico. So this is right now a huge fighting force, but also could be a liability in terms of uh, vulnerability to comm snipes, having all three of them so close together here. Um, there's not really been much raiding on the core bases because they are quite far back. They're only really accessible by air, and uh, both teams have really had a, a critical mass of interceptors to, uh, to repel bomber raids. Um, our two interceptors landed down here. Don't seem to be being troubled by Max. Uh, perhaps they will come back to that later. But the to and fro of comm pushes and land armies is still going on in this corner. And now Jackhammer pushing boldly forward with their gun upgrade. Uh, they've got Quiet Storm, who had got into the uh, green, um, or what was in the green. Got them down into the yellow there, but only just, they're still relatively safe. And with two comms on one here, uh, Jackhammer is forced to pull back. But now, evening the odds, Alexander Berlin is pushing up with a full health comm. Um, however, there are still three comms for the south side, so they could be doing a lot more if they chose to push all at once, especially as there's now an upgrade going on for Jackhammer. Uh, Nano is very strong if you want to attack with your comm, and uh, they really need to push in in the next 30 seconds if they want to force Jackhammer to cancel that upgrade. But, um, but Alexander at the front here is uh is bodyguarding their ally the unit's now pushing in as far as the point defense for the coal team and uh really that's uh that's caused them a lot of losses over here leaving a bunch of people playing behind but now a t2 engineer is being airlifted in for jackhammer and so what are they going to build here possibly some t2 point defense um, possibly some shields to try and defend this area, especially now that uh, the comms have been able to take down two of the factories. And the, the remaining three are very much in peril here. Um, Alexander trying to defend here, but is not able to take the heat at the front line, having to be relieved by Jackhammer, who has completed their nano repair. Uh, looks like this factory is also going to go down for this team. Leaving only two factories for uh, for, um, for Alexander Berlin. Um, also, T2PD has gone up on both sides of the engagement here. And, and Jackhammer has rather foolishly wandered into range there. But now Max has gone into range on the north side and is backing off. Um, however, Jackhammer really using the full depth of their health bar there, down to three and a half K, down into the red, but now gets out of range. Um, Alex still hoping to push up here, but looks within PD range. Uh, 
happen? Perhaps they've got stealth? No. Um, don't know why they're not taking PD fire there. Um, a bit of a, a, a pause here while the uh, the Southern team has realized that they're behind on the upgrades and so they're getting their own. Uh, they fail to put up a shield there. The factories are being reclaimed, uh, perhaps to be put down again further back. Um, but there's, there's a whole load of T2 factories now gone up for Alexander Berlin in their home base. And so that is looking uh, fairly strong as long as they can keep moving those units down. Um, the South also trying to put up a shield and failing. Uh, but they, they did manage to get one up. And it's all still very much a game of rock and sock and robots here. The commanders walk forward. They get into the opposing PD range. They walk back again when they uh, get into dangerous health levels. And so this is a very volatile situation uh, with comms spending most of their time on yellow health. And that makes them a lot more vulnerable to a dive or a snipe or even to just a, a mistake where they overextend. They don't quite come back fast enough. So the game really could be ending at any time here. Uh, meanwhile, Tech 2 gunships uh, have come out for leader. Uh, trying to get some work done on the front line. Not really achieved much before getting mobbed up by the ASFs of Quiet Storm. And if we take a look at the air game, um, Quiet Storm's already queued up all of their mixes to three. They've definitely been taking advantage of not having to, uh, to extend themselves and being in the air slot to rush to T3 air. And so they've got their T3 air HQ and uh, one factory that's still on T1. Um, T2 air factory HQ for Max Connector. And a T3 HQ, but no second factory for Chico. Uh, whereas if we look on the north side, this is still T1. And uh, this is up to T2. We saw the gunship. There's a second one come out now. Uh, it's not being used yet. Perhaps building up a, a larger force here. Oh, no. This air factory has queued an upgrade to T3. So we'll see some T3 uh, for the north side as well soon. Um, and also T2 queuing T3 at the back here from Jackhammer. Uh, north side obviously realizing that they're behind at this point on air. Uh, and they really need to get T3 air. Uh, if they want to stay in the air game. Um, however, the Rock and Sock and Robot is on again. All of the commanders have uh, regen their HP. And so South is pushing forward again. This time into TAC Missile or Mobile TAC Missile Fire. Clearing up a bunch of units that were caught out inside of shields. Tom's pushing forward, not really eating the missile fire, but now they're pushing into Titans and they really can't sustain this level of damage. Max Connector's deep into the yellow here. Uh, Quiet Storm's come up to, to body block the shots to defend and they, they really have succeeded in splitting the damage between them, but it looks like Quiet Storm's done a bit too much of that. They're down into the red, 1500 HP. Can they make it back to the shield in time? No, they can't. And they go up, and Max Connector's still only on 3,500. Made it back to the shield. But Alexander Berlin also overextending there. Sorry, sorry, that was Jack Jack Hammer also overextending there. Um, Alexander Berlin still in the yellow, but on about uh, two-thirds health. But uh, Max looking a lot worse off. And Chico about half, more than half. Um, so still everything to play for in this area and it looks like alexander berlin's overextended now needs to be running away isn't running away also goes off and just as i said this situation changed in a moment when those t3 units came out and the comms were overextended they couldn't get away fast enough so mutual death there for chico and alexander berlin and uh, also nearly mutual death for Quiet Storm and Jackhammer there. Quiet Storm laying down their life for Max Nectar, uh, whose comm is still there, still deep in the yellow, and is walking away as fast as its little legs can carry it. 
while this position is going down to the mobile missile launchers. There's no missile defense here. The shield's deactivated. They don't want to put any more energy or resources into this position. Um, probably should have uh, stopped the factory as well. They have stopped the factory. Nothing queued up there. And Quiet Storm is suggesting to nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. So now we were looking at a 3v3 and we're looking at a 1v1. And I suspect we'll have uh, a bit of quiet for a few minutes while uh, both the remaining players, Leader and Max, um, assess, adjust their factory build queues, look at what the eco is now doing, especially now as Max in the south is on uh, nearly twice the mass income of leader and um, yeah it means with all that income concentrated the players can really think about what they want to do next where they want to invest those resources uh, calm back suggests quiet storm because they know that it's now sniper clock having your commander this far out into the front this late in the game very dangerous unless you're going to go for those top level upgrades like shields uh, and t3 um, the t3 building upgrade of course also gives you a lot of extra hit points but at the same time leader still pushing forward with t3 and with mobile missile launchers and there's nothing to stop this here these are all t1 units uh, there's T1 land there. Um, I, I don't even see a land. Oh, this one's on pause. That's T2. Uh, this one's on pause, but it's still T1. There's just there's no T3 land out for the South team, and that really needs to be at this point. They're, they're losing everything to Titans. The Titans can just walk over the map at this point. Uh, however, if they don't walk and they just stand there in range of the T2PD while they're fighting the Tech 1 RT units, they're, they're not going to get a lot done. So, yeah, a, a good push from Max there. Losing a lot of numbers here, but pushing their remaining units, uh, including their T2 assault bots and this huge spam of T1 artillery, pushing those into the Titans um, while supported by PD to hold that advance but there's no way they can push into this the shielded 2-2 PD even with these numbers um, yeah the, the, the PD and the shields is going to stop that so they really need to come back to regroup uh, to take advantage of the reclaim in this area which is uh, four, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, maybe even 10k reclaim in this corner. But Lida has uh, already been looking at what they want to do with their new resources. And what they wanted to do is build a monkey lord uh, with a few bricks as escort. And monkey lord is now pushing its way south it will be a couple of minutes before it gets to the front line um there's some attack pings going out here i'm not really sure why either sams or do asfs so quiet storm very much uh backseating at this point they are the highest rated player on team south and so it's it is very appropriate now that they've gone out to be looking more strategically since they don't have to micro they don't have to be worrying about the economy they can look at what is missing on the map and they're being very helpful you're going to die to air because um there's a few asfs here uh the, the north side's been stockpiling asfs here as well but also has a broadsword two broadswords um yeah those two broadswords supported by all these asfs can definitely push into the south and this little expeditionary force of the leftover inties is uh is just feeling that out really um as well as scouting there's a couple of scouts in with this mix as well and and they can see that they're, they're not being troubled at all however while we worry about air let's also worry about lamb because this monkey lord is pushing and pushing 
Its laser is hitting everything. It's taking some PD fire, but it's got plenty of health to tank that. And it's clearing up this position while the bricks kind of string along behind to clear up the stragglers. They are uh, having a bit of trouble with firing into terrain here. This is the, uh, the Forged Alliance uh, unit AI strikes again. Doesn't understand when shots are being blocked by terrain. Um, but that's not a problem for the Monkey Lord at all, which is still pushing forward. And really, nothing, nothing to stop it here. Um, so, following the probing attack here, Leader has now pushed their ASF south. They've, um, they've mopped up the ASFs from Max. Max is walking back into shields because they realize now how vulnerable they are. This looks like a uh, flak going up. Really wants to be Sam's at this stage, but... Um, Black's better than nothing. Um, also, there's T1 point defense going up here. Why is there T1 point defense? Um, it's not really going to do much against the Monkey Lord. Can you tickle a spider? That is the question that we want the answer to here. Um, and so these... Uh, yeah, leaders showing their hands here with the, the broadswords. Um, clearing up the eco in the center. Uh, however, flying into flak here, uh, not good. But having tipped their hand, if they'd sent those straight to the comm, they might have been able to finish the game already. Um, however, where has Max's comm gone? Here we go. Walking across open terrain, that's incredibly dangerous with those broadswords out. And if Leader knew that, they probably would send the broadswords straight there. Um, Oh, however, one of these uh, earlier gunships from the south team uh, is trying to attack the bricks. Gets cleaned up by Inties. That's just uh, that's kind of embarrassing. Monkey Lord makes it to the next installation for Max. Not very efficient use of its laser there. Rotating a lot. Uh, cleaning up the black, though, which is... A good shout if you think you might want to bring your gunships into this area soon. And it marches on completely untroubled by any of the, the T1 tickling that it got. Uh, in fact, it's, it's already on more health than it was before it came to this area. Now cleaning up these T3 mexes. And so this has got to be the death spiral for Max. Um, a ping goes out on the commander location. But Lida is unhurried, is taking it slow, being very uh, cautious and thorough, and clearing up everything that's on the way, not going for the comp snipe. So at this stage, uh, yeah, so Max is surrounding themselves with T3 point defense in the hopes that they will be able to fight off the, the Monkey Lord, which is now in range. Um, wow, it's got enough vets now to be on 135 uh, re regen per second. So it's going to be that much harder for, uh, for anything to defend. But rather than going into the calm surrounded by Ravagers, it's just going to mop up all of this undefended stuff at the back. Well, it's not quite undefended. There's a couple of PDs. Um, T2 PDs. There's nothing to trouble it here. Um, Strategic launch still air Strategic going up. Launch oh, but surprise nuke comes out for Max here. And the question... Oh, and a, a nuke almost simultaneously on both sides. So the question is, how is the scouting gone? Strategic launch detected. Two nukes coming out, really. So maybe Max should not have held on to that nuke if they uh, if they could have got it out a bit sooner um, and they'd scouted the con location. Perhaps that would have been good. And if we look at the nukes in split screen, they both land almost simultaneously. However, there is still one in flight and it's going over to this area. Uh, a Novax coming up, but Nuke Defense queued, did not finish construction there. 
yeah, the Novaks uh, in progress was also eliminated by that strategic launch. And now a Monkey Lord has come out for Max as well. Hoping to really defend. Um, Max still walking around unaccompanied. It's very dangerous. Um, Monkey Lord in this this corner has just stopped. There's nothing more for them to kill in this area. Um, the question is, do the players know where each other's comms are? So if I if I look at Max's POV here, I'm going to say that's a no. Uh, kennels just do one. Um, yeah, so doesn't look like they see a calm at all here. Uh, whereas if I look at leaders POV, they no longer see Max. Um, so both teams really need to do some scouting. Uh, no further nuke defenses going up in the north. Uh, perhaps assuming that that was the only nuke launcher, and I think that would be a fair assumption. This monkey now makes it to Max's calm, focuses it, but is it going to be able to run it down? And it gets down into the red, 3k. He makes it back into the shield, but the shield goes down. And that's how the game ends. So that was that was quite an exciting uh, and risky conclusion there. Nukes coming out almost at the same time for those surviving players. And overall, very, uh, very volatile game. The situation in this bottom left corner really could have gone either way for about 10 minutes. That, that could have been a game ender right here. Um, and it was the eventually the, the T3 land units coming out for the north that tipped that over the edge uh, nearly ended the game Max got away and um, never really came back but those nukes at the end so yeah exciting game what did you think did the north team deserve to win uh, do you think that the the engagement in the bottom left should have gone differently and what do you think if you were left in that 1v1 position at the end what do you think you would have done differently to change the course of that game? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you again for another game soon. This has been Forged Lions Forever. You've been an appreciative audience, and I've been Tipton Diego. Toodle pip. <laughs>